Hey everybody, this is Hunter Satterfield, uh, the Chief Investment Officer and one of the partners of Kane Waters and Associates. As always, I am joined by my fellow partner, Brian Bortz, who is the head of the Kane Waters and Associates Investment Committee, and also Brad Sanders, the Managing Director of Tectonic Advisors. This is your May market update. For the month of May, the S&P 500 is up 0.4%. Global stocks were down 1.2%. Domestic bonds were down 1.1% and global bonds were down 2.0%. Now, as we referenced last, uh, last month on our uh, April monthly update, it is important to note that for the month, while the S&P was up 0.4, the equal weight S&P was actually down 3.8% for the month. So there's a, a quite a divergence between what we're seeing on the weighted average actual S&P 500 versus that equal weight one that uh, assigns an equal weight to each individual holding in the S&P. We talked a little bit about that last week, and Brad, I'd love to start coming over to you, talking through a little bit about what's going on in the broader economy, uh, especially as we see that divergence, um, as well as maybe talking a little bit about what we saw during the month with NVIDIA and some of the other artificial intelligence names uh, in that S&P 500. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think what, what we're seeing is what we've been talking about for the better part of the last six months is that we're probably already in a recession and they'll let us know uh, in about six to eight months uh, that, that we've been in one. Um, if you look at basically everything except for employment, and if you watch my Friday presentations, I have a chart that shows you how that data has gotten a little bit wonky since the pandemic, so I don't know how much I trust it, but you know, in May, oil's down almost 18 percent, copper's down mid single digits. Um, you've got this morning Dollar General is kind of a, a lowering consumer barometer missed and, and their stocks down 15 percent. Um, there's just kind of signs everywhere that there's some softening in the broader economy. And, you know, you've got a 10% gap between the, the equal weighted S&P and the top end because of AI. But I, I think, you know, fundamentals matter more than ever right now. And that what we're seeing is really uh, those 75 basis point rate hikes last year around this time are starting to work their way into the real economy. So as we move into the summer, I'm, I'm fully expecting kind of the, the, the shine coming off the apple in terms of how people are spinning this thing. And you're going to start hearing about credit tightening. Um, the Fed's not going to cut rates. Uh, I think that's very clear. They're going to probably go on an extended pause here. The market's priced in rate cuts post Silicon Valley Bank blowing up. So you're going to have volatility surrounding that. Uh, so I just think you're going to start to see the narrative shift and you're going to start to really see uh, kind of the, the, the softness in the overall economy. The good news for us is that's already been priced in to the broader, broader swaths of the economy. There's stuff we can invest in now. Um, you just don't want to be in the higher end of the expensive stuff. And look, I'm a big believer in AI. Frankly, we need the productivity gains and the growth it's going to generate. Um, we're a mature economy. And if we're going to continue to grow and, and to kind of have our economy lead the world uh, across, you know, basically every scope you want to look at, we need that productivity gains that you're going to get from AI. Uh, but the prices these stocks are trading at are frankly silly. Um, this, this is not different. I know AI is disruptive and it might be the greatest thing ever. Well, 22 years ago, it was the internet and everybody was talking about the internet in the same terms, same things being said. And you had stocks like Cisco. I have a chart in my uh, presentation that Paul Lyons sent last night where NVIDIA and Cisco have the exact same chart from back then too. And back then it was, oh, you just got to buy Cisco. They make all the equipment for the internet. And the next thing you know, you know, if you bought Cisco in 2000, 2001, you still have a loss on paper and Cisco is still a great company. So these things are just trading at, at huge multiples. NVIDIA is currently trading at 74 to 75 times forward EBITDA. OK, you can make a very convincing argument that I think is correct, that these are peak EBITDA margins for them because the GPU chips are so expensive and they're making such huge profit. It's going to attract a ton of co uh, competition. And at some point, they're going to have to compete on price and those margins are going to get squeezed down. So you're paying 74 times forward peak EBITDA margins for a company. There's no company on the planet that you would pay that for. I don't care what they make. I don't care. 
I don't care if it's AI. I don't think care if it's something better than AI that's five years down the line. It's too expensive. You don't make that. When we talk about these things, we're not talking about the underlying technology or we're not, it's not an indictment on what, what sector they're serving. It's that you have to be cognizant of the price you pay for something because if those stocks just mean revert to a, a market multiple, I'm not talking about below market. I, you know, should Microsoft trade at 35 times earnings? I would argue no with seven and a half percent revenue growth. Could it trade at 20? Sure. But I probably a decent buy at 20 times earnings. But guess what? That's a 45% re-rate from where we are right now. Um, so you have to be very careful. You know, 70 times EBITDA for any, I mean, Kane Waters isn't for sale, but if somebody walked in the door and said, hey, guys, you want 70 times next year's EBITDA, I bet you would have a meeting about it, right? I mean, that's just, it's a crazy price for anything. Um, and so I, I just think the top end of that market has gotten a little nutty. If you look back at .com too, all the hyperbole they were saying, nobody guessed what the internet was going to turn into. Where's all the profit now? It's in these companies that didn't exist. It's in social media these huge platform companies that encompass cloud computing and all this stuff that wasn't even around. And so to think that I've got AI handled, I'm just going to buy this one stock and run it to the moon, doesn't make sense. The first dollar in for a chip is likely not going to be where all the profit center for AI goes. We probably can't even contemplate what that is now. It's going to permeate everything. So if you want to invest in AI, we can, we're going to do it but we're going to be smart about it. You don't have to do it this second. You're, there's no FOMO here. And right now it's a language, a language thing. It's not even really anything yet to get excited about. Yeah. That, thanks Brad for the commentary kind of on where things are right now. And I think the reality is we continue to talk through with clients is, um, you know, just again, diversification matters, right? Because we don't want to get overweight into any individual sector or any individual country or anything like that. And so, um, you know, Brian, I do want to come over uh, to you very quickly as well. We, um, you know, here as we're recording last night, the House did pass, um, you know, sort of a, a, an, an increase to the debt ceiling. Um, and so at this point, it's pretty much a done deal, like we've been talking about on here and our other avenues, podcasts and things like that. Um, so this is good for probably the overall economy, just because the certainty it does provide a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what we're thinking and seeing um, as this gets passed and the potential impacts on tax reform and, and other you know pockets of legislation. Sure. Th thank you, Hunter. Um, it, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there that the, uh, the debt ceiling discussion has been resolved. It is now just a formality of, uh, of getting passed through the House and the Senate. Um, the fact is, is that President Biden had to give up his presidential campaign promise of taxing the quote unquote wealthy um, and using that money for additional spending measures uh, and additional programs. So that is now off the table and that will not reemerge uh, in the near future. Uh, also the, the, the tax laws themselves are pretty much going to stay set in stone now through at least the end of 25, which is when current tax legislation starts to sunset. And uh, we'll start to see bigger tax, proposed bigger tax changes at the end of 25. So how that matters to the economy is in, and to the markets is that there's now stability as it relates to uh, our system of taxation. We kind of know what the rules are for the next couple of three years. Um, there will be a, a, a big debate uh, and a lot of changes, I believe, by the end of 25, but that may be a different administration at that point. Um, I think the other thing that I wanted to echo is something that Brad mentioned a second ago of, you know, he was talking about the rate increases and how those bigger rate increases are now creeping their way into uh, the current economy and current markets, and that we're probably already in a recession, as Brad mentioned, uh, they'll just let us know later. Uh, the, the fact is, is I agree completely that I, and I tell my clients this on a regular basis, you know, there's there's technical markers of a recession, and one of them is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. We had that last year. Uh, one of them is the S and P being down more than 20 percent. That happened five times last year. Uh, one of them is uh, indicators of inverted yield curve. We have that. So I mean, the, the old cliche: if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, it's a duck. 
And uh, I believe that we are in a recession. Nobody's admitted to it. And I do believe that we still have some volatility ahead of us, but at least now we've kind of gotten through the big humps of that. Uh, and that's what I've been telling my clients. So um, from that perspective, I think we have more solid ground to plan on going forward because we know what the rules are. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And, uh, you know, obviously, as we head into the summer, we're going to have more candidates declaring. We're going to have continued discussions related to, you know, potential federal government austerity measures, things like that. And we'll continue to have volatility in the market. So um, as always, we'll be back in front of you um, at the end of June with the June market update. Stay tuned for what is likely to be a very interesting summer. Thank you so much.